Hello folks. In a preceding video, we looked at the idea of having the Q of a state variable filter controlled by an external voltage. One side effect of that is that the resonant peak of the resulting filter had a gain equal to whatever the Q was. So if you had a Q of 10, high Q filter, you would also have a voltage gain of 10. And the question becomes, is it possible? Is it possible to adjust our Q controllable uh, voltage controlled filter such that that resonant peak always stays at unity? In other words, zero dB. And the answer is yes. I'm Professor Fiore, and I'm going to explain exactly how to do that. And yes, it's time for a VCF with Q control redux. The return of the son of the state variable filter, some more. In a prior video, we looked at how you could take a state variable filter and control its resonant Q with a control voltage. So instead of just having a pot to do that, you could have some kind of programmable signal that would adjust the Q of the filter. Now, a little reminder, the issue we came up with, okay, was an interaction between the Q and the gain. So we started with this VCF, okay, that was essentially a state variable filter. We figured out a way of using an OTA to get the critical frequency to change. Then we took that idea of using the OTA we applied that to the Q, so now that we could get the Q to be under the control of another control voltage, a second control voltage. The only downside, potentially the only downside, is that the resonant peak, its gain, is equivalent to the Q. So if you have a high Q circuit, let's say you have a, a gain of, uh, excuse me, a Q of 10, then you're going to wind up with a voltage gain of 10, or 20 dB. And with that high of a gain, you know, if you have a signal somewhere in that area around the resonant peak, you might run into clipping, right? You might run into overload issues. Now, it's possible, I showed you how you could take one of the input resistors and adjust that to bring the overall gain down, okay? But, you know, if you're going to sit there and change the Q, then now you're left with this problem of how do you change the resistor? In other words, I don't want to have to, like, have a pot for that thing to adjust just in case I get some clipping. I would like to do that programmatically as well. In other words, I would like to modify that final circuit that we came up with such that when you dial in a high Q, the gain is automatically brought down for you. In other words, we would like to set it up so that the peak of that resonant curve is right at zero dB, is right at unity. That's the concept. Now, the downside of that is the passband sections, the flat parts, if you will, of the high-pass and low-pass filters are going to have gains that are in negative dB. You're going to have cut in there. That's really the only way you can do this. It's one or the other, basically. I mean, you know, it turns out you can actually modify the circuit I'm going to show you to kind of get a middle ground, but, you know, that's something, uh, you know, to play around with on your own. But in any case, let's go back to that uh, state variable filter with the voltage control. All right, this is where we left off. Essential state variable filter. There was an op amp here to control the Q, and we replaced that with an OTA. And now we have this uh, Q control voltage over here. So as this voltage goes up and down, we can change the Q of the filter. Right? And just to kind of uh, verify all of this good stuff, we'll do a Bode plot on it. And here we go. Get the legend down here. All right, so uh, the middle one here, the sort of olive green, that's the bandpass peaking up. The darker green is um, the low pass response, and then the high pass is this sort of maroon, all right? So they are resonant at approximately 1.59 kilohertz. And with this particular circuit, with this particular control voltage, in this case minus 10, um, we have a fairly high Q. And you can see what's happening, right? Here's the passband gain uh, for the high and the low pass right here. It's 0 dB. But right at resonance, boom, this thing pops up. 
and we're getting something maybe up around 17 or so db for that resonance all right now that's that's a pretty high value okay like i said you could wind up with some clipping in a case like that so you know the option that we talked about was well let's go and monkey with r4 if i increase r4 then that will decrease the base gain this whole thing will get pushed down all right so let's take a look at that so i'm just going to you know throw in a value here in this case i'll just put in 20k factor of two we'll rerun this and you can see what i did right so here's the original here's the new one we just push the entire thing down all right so this is now sitting down here um, that looks like about 6 db which would make sense factor of two so the pass band gain is pushed down but that pushes everything down so now the resonant peak isn't so bad and of course you could put in a larger value and push this down even further to the point where that peak hits right there at zero db all right let's go back to our original value but as i said in the opener the problem now is well i changed the cue and now i have like a mechanical control mechanical control over this resistor that doesn't seem very good okay um you know what i would like to do is as the uh control voltage for the q changes so let me just throw in a value here like i don't know how about minus five all right uh this should sort of broaden the curve a little bit and i did change this back to 10 so our pass band gain should be back to zero all right so you can see what's happening there's the pass band gain it's definitely fatter the peak now is only 10 our original one right had this peak up around like i said maybe 17 or so pass band gains at zero so broad right broaden out that peak peaks not as quite not quite as high um and now you got to go in and change this resistor well you know it's fine if you have like a certain set point but if you're going to change this a lot you know you got some like i said some kind of programmatic thing going on over here and you are running into a problem with with overload then i would like to be able to sort of change this r4 effectively the way i'm changing the q right i would like this control voltage to sort of somehow affect that as well now it might very well be that you're never having uh overload problems you know it might be that the signals that you're looking at like maybe musical signals mostly live down here and what you're really doing on the resonance is affecting some upper harmonics and they're not that big to begin with so you're never running into a clipping problem in that case fine use this you're good right but what if you know you do have signals that are up here and you do run into a, this problem of um you know possible uh, overload right um it's either going to be overload or it's going to be an amplitude change down at these lowest and highest frequencies depending on which um you know which one you're using here of course if you're using bandpass you probably do want a constant output so um for the bandpass you know you'd always have the peak right around zero and that would work out to be very convenient for the most part right so this is definitely a worthwhile thing to look at well maybe you've been looking at this circuit considered what we did before and you already have an idea and that idea might be to remove r4 and put another ota in here because after all we used to have an op amp here which was controlling the signal out of the bandpass mixing some of that after scaling through the op amp in with the summing amplifier right that's how we changed the q so could i just change some signals over here in other words the gain since our force can change the gain then maybe i can use this same control voltage to control a vca up front and have it automatically track the peakiness if you will of that response i think that's a go well it turns out it most certainly is and it's actually even easier than you might think so here's the new ota right r4 is gone We've, we have this new ota and of course the usual divider out front to prevent um, overload on the ota because they don't like big signals on the input um notice the control voltage over here it's, it's, i've just tied this directly back to the original uh, vq control and i have the in fact same exact size resistor 
that I had before, right? So these are both tied back. They're going to get the same control currents, I, A, B, C, and we're going to have the same exact effect. And this thing will track very nicely, right? R4 is gone. This basically replaces the function of R4. But again, the function of R4 was to take an input voltage and turn it into an input current. And that's exactly what the transconductance amplifier does. It takes an input voltage and turns it into an output current. All right, that's what transconductance is. So, let's do a test. A, let's see how good this works. So I've got um, a fairly high Q down here, right? Here's my Q at 10. Uh, excuse, excuse me, my control voltage of minus 10 volts to give us a high Q. And here we go, right? Fairly peaky. Um, I'm just going to go back. I'm not going to say that this is identical to what we started with in terms of shape. It is similar, all right? Because, you know, the matching on this, hmm, who knows? But it is similar, all right? Um, as a matter of fact, I think this actually comes out, yeah, it actually matches really nice, okay? Yeah. Um, but here's the dig, right? The resonant peak is at zero, but the passband parts are sitting down here at like minus 17. In other words, we basically took this original circuit and pushed the whole thing down 17 decibels as if we went in and changed that R4 value, right? So at least here it looks like it tracks well. Will it track at other Q values, right? In other words, will they always come up to be zero? Or are we going to have to monkey with this a little bit? All right? So, you know, we had some other ones, right? Like this. Kind of broad. Is this going to wind up the same? Or is it going to, like, wind up over here? Maybe over here for a peak. Let's find out. What do you think? Let's put in zero volts. Right? Halfway up. The range on this would be maybe plus or minus 12. If you don't, if you don't really want to push it. It's going to be a little bit less than the power supply rails because of the um, current mirrors that are inside the OTA. So you've got to have a little bit of elbow room in there. But in any case, let's do uh, another body plot. Bonk. Okay, so again, higher VQ gives lower Q. We clearly have a lower Q. Um, and look, there's the, pa there's the pass band response, right? That's that sort of olive green in there. That's right at zero. And again, we can see the uh, band pass parts of the high pass, low pass pushed down, but not as much, right? They're pushed down, but not as much, right? So this is pushed down to minus 17 to get that resonant peak at zero. This one is only pushed down about six-ish to get that resonant peak right at zero, right? And we can just play with this. Try it, you know? Let's put in something that uh, basically gives us hardly any resonant peak at all. Right, 10 volts. Now we're getting way up there as far as control voltage, and we're going to be looking at a fairly minimal Q. It won't be perfectly flat, but it'll be a fairly minimal Q. And there you go. Right. So now it's only reducing the gain. It's only suppressing the gain by about a dB. But again, your bandpass response, boom, there it is, right at zero, and the matching is very, very nice. Right. Didn't even take a whole bunch of work. Now. You might decide that you kind of want a middle ground. In other words, instead of always having the resonant peak right at zero, which is probably what you would want to do if you're looking at the bandpass output specifically. But maybe if you're looking at a low pass or a high pass, you might say, well, I would like the bandpass to be not affected quite so much. I can tolerate a little bit of a peak. Well, in that case, you'd have to make a little bit fancier of a... Um, control voltage generator here. You could take the original control voltage and sum that into maybe a little summing amplifier so you could scale it, change its range, and probably add a, a fixed offset to it. Okay, a little summing amplifier, and then that is what would feed this RA over here. Okay, um, and you could monkey around with that and get different kinds of scalings, but I think for the most part, you're either going to want the, the uh, pass band to be fixed and you'll accept the resonant peak, or if you're using, like I said, the bandpass output, and you always want that to be consistent, then we'll set that to zero, zero dB, and allow the bandpass parts of high pass and low pass to drop out, because you're not using them. 
All right? It wouldn't matter. And that's what this circuit does. Okay. Well, you know, the final thing is, hey, can I add this to the larger VCF that, you know, we ended up with in the preceding video? In other words, it also had control voltage. Yeah, you can. But this thing is getting so big, I can't really fit it on one screen here and have it not be tiny. So I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. All right. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this. It's a kind of an interesting series here, building, 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 seeing where we can go with something. You know, and it's kind of cool because the, the more you learn about these things, the more stuff you can do because those new things become tools to allow you to create new tools. And that process continues. All right. Okay. Professor Fiore here saying, take care. Have a good one.